In 2021, the District Municipality of Muskoka received provincial funding through the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks to conduct 12 technical projects coined Making Waves. The projects aim to examine existing conditions in the Muskoka River watershed, explore ways to reduce the impacts of flooding, and enhance watershed health. These projects will lay the foundation for an integrated watershed management approach for the Muskoka River watershed that seeks to manage human activities and natural resources together on a watershed basis, taking into consideration the connected interests and needs of the environment, economy, and society. The district has led the projects with assistance from an established community roundtable, which includes representatives from the Muskoka Watershed Council, area municipalities, local businesses, and various community organizations across the watershed. The reports and accompanying video presentations for the 12 projects have been prepared by consultants who specialize in the subject matter. The first slide shows the title of this project. Operational Adjustments and Scope and Study for the Muskoka River Water Management Plan. The District of Muskoka commissioned Hatch to carry out this project. Hatch is a leading global engineering consulting firm with a proven record and reputation for quality services. For much of its history, Hatch has been actively involved in water resource development, planning and management for a variety of projects around the world. These projects have varied significantly in terms of scope from site drainage to complex and civil structure conveyance hydraulics to basin-wide water and flood management planning. Through our involvement in water resources projects for both public and private clients, we have built and continue to foster a group of water management professionals that have developed innovative solutions to complex water and flood management challenges and have contributed to the formulation of policy and implementation of plans that lead to the sustainable management of our water resources. My name is Joan Frain. I'm a civil engineer specializing in the area of water resources. Over the past year, I've worked with Hatch on this project for the District of Muskoka to support them in their integrated watershed management initiative. This slide is titled Purpose and Scope of Project. It includes a bullet outlining the purpose of the project and two additional bullets covering the scope. The purpose of the project was to support continued integrated watershed management by identifying potential operational adjustments to reduce flood risk and enhance ecological resiliency in the Muskoka River watershed. The project had two phases, as shown in the bullets under scope. Phase one of this project included the review of the Muskoka River Water Management Plan, while phase two focused on providing a comprehensive scope of the work that would be required to address potential amendment requests for the Muskoka River Water Management Plan. In addition, Phase 2 was further expanded to include a gap analysis to identify where insufficient information currently exists, but which could help inform other potential amendment requests. It also included a review of the communication and information sharing processes during Fresh App, and a high-level look at the impact of climate change on the watershed with respect to operational adjustments going forward. This slide is entitled Background on Muskoka River Water Management. The first two bullets on the slide outline the many interests, drivers and constraints behind water management and the evolution of the water management in the watershed over time through different agreements and plans. It is important to understand how the water management plan came to its current form in order to assess how changes might be made going forward. The third bullet identifies the three focus areas of the study. Next slide is entitled Muskoka River Watershed Data Sources. It contains a map of the entire Muskoka River watershed and identifies the sites of snow survey stations, meteorological stations, and hydrometric flow and elevation stations that were used in the study. It should be noted that the project focused on all municipalities within the watershed and that District of Muskoka staff continue to liaise with their counterparts in other municipalities in the watershed. This slide is titled Project Steps, Phase 1, and it includes bullets identifying the main steps for Phase 1. To determine where there might be opportunities to make operational adjustments to the water management plan, it was necessary to first go back and look at historical data in four recent years with high flow conditions, 2019, 2016, 2013, and 2008, to better understand the drivers behind these conditions 
and how water levels change during the freshet period of these years. Snow Water Equivalent Data, or SWE, SWE, was extracted from snow surveys taken from courses in the watershed and plotted against total precipitation and temperature data from local meteorological stations to establish the conditions in each year. This information was then considered in relation to graphs of the water levels in the large lakes in the watershed, such as Lake Muskoka, to try to understand how the water levels evolved. In conjunction with this data assessment, the water level and flow limits in the Water Management Plan were also reviewed to understand how they may have impacted operations, and specific trigger values based on snow water content or rainfall amounts that allow for greater lowering of water levels in the lakes during the spring runoff period in abnormal years were also compared with recorded meteorological conditions and historical water levels. Plots of this data are shown in later slides. With a focus on Lake Muskoka, numerical modeling was used to look at the impact on peak water levels of lowering the target operating level in the water management plan to a point halfway between its current level and the bottom of the normal operating zone from mid-March to mid-May. The next slide is titled Data Assessment, Meteorological Data. It shows a graph with plots of the daily precipitation and air temperature from the Muskoka Airport Meteorological Station for the period of January to May of 2019. The graph also includes snow water equivalent data, representative of how much water is in the snow, taken from periodic snow surveys on the Rosso Falls Snow Survey course over the same period. The historical minimum, median, and maximum snow water equivalent values have also been overlaid on the graph. From this graph, it can be seen that the heavy rainfall that was experienced as temperatures rose above zero helped to accelerate the snow melt and increase flows in the rivers. The following slide is titled Data Assessment, Water Levels. It includes a graph showing the historical water levels for Lake Muskoka for 2019, 2016, 2013, and 2008, as well as the operating zones from the Water Management Plan. The impact of the rapidly melting snow shown in the previous graph on the water level in 2019 can be seen in the plot. The next slide is titled Project Steps, Phase 2. It contains bullets identifying the several components that made up the work of Phase 2. The first component involved a review of the process for making a Water Management Plan amendment request and the steps in the amendment process itself. Secondly, because some of the areas identified in Phase 1 as potential areas for amendment requests could not be fully assessed due to limited information, an additional summary of the information required to make a decision on considering these areas for amendment requests was prepared in Phase 2. Through the review process, it was also identified that there is a lot of information available during the spring runoff period, but some concerns had been raised about its availability and if it was being properly understood. The information that is available was identified, along with the ways in which it's shared with municipal governments. The final component of phase two involved a review of climate change studies, both of a general nature and specific to the Muskoka River watershed, to help understand how climate change might impact or necessitate future operational adjustments or adaptive management within the Muskoka River Water Management Plan. This slide is titled Phase One, Results. Muskoka River Water Management Plan Potential Amendment Requests. It shows two proposals for potential Water Management Plan amendment requests. In reviewing the Water Management Plan, it was noted that while it contains criteria to enable greater lake level drawdown under more extreme snowpack or rainfall conditions, these conditions were not met in the recent high flow years. Therefore, it is recommended that these criteria be further reviewed to determine if the science behind them has evolved or if the conditions being experienced have changed, such that the criteria should be updated. It was also determined that, given the information currently available, there were limited options for making operational adjustments in the water management plan. Numerical modeling of the impact of lowering the target operating level for Lake Muskoka to a point halfway between the current target operating level and the bottom of the normal operating zone for the period of mid-March to mid-May showed that only a nominal reduction in the maximum water surface elevation of 0.05 meters and 0.01 meters would have been experienced on Lake Muskoka for the 2013 and 2019 events, respectively. The second proposal 
is to consider more fully utilizing the lower portion of the normal operating zone during the mid-March to mid-May period, even if snow conditions are not extreme, and that additional studies be undertaken to understand the impact of this operation on other interests in the watershed under the full range of flow conditions. The next slide is titled Phase 2 Results. It includes bullets covering the findings for Phase 2. The process to be followed to initiate a Water Management Plan Amendment request and to see it through to a decision by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry was identified using information from the plan itself and a technical bulletin issued by the Ministry in October 2016, entitled Maintaining Water Management Plans. Changes to decision criteria would likely be considered minor amendments because they are technically based and they would not likely require significant consultation. However, any changes to operations would be considered major amendments and they would, be, would require consultation with all parties that may be affected. In reviewing communications and information sharing in regard to spring conditions, it appears that while there are several processes in place for sharing of the information, a review of the distribution of the available information within local organizations should be undertaken to ensure that the information is getting to those who need it. In addition, further assessment of impacted areas should be considered to better understand potential impacts under high flow conditions. As noted previously, the final step in this project was to briefly review climate change in the watershed. It is expected that the impacts due to the effects of climate change on precipitation, temperature and flow in the Muskoka River watershed will likely continue to create challenges with respect to potential flooding. Since there are limited operational adjustments to be considered under current conditions, it is unlikely that adaptation for climate change can be achieved through operational adjustments. However, where necessary, the Muskoka River Water Management Plan should be updated if new information supports new operational changes to support climate change adaptation. The final slide is titled Water Management Planning and Integrated Watershed Management. The bullets on this slide address how the work from this project helps inform integrated watershed management in the Muskoka River watershed. Water management planning is a key component in integrated watershed management. For the Muskoka River, it allows for consideration of the impact of operation of the water control facilities on the multiple interests and users in the watershed, and it is intended to lead to net benefit to society through the constraints outlined in the facility operating plans. In recognition of the extreme conditions that have been experienced during the spring period in several recent years, this project provided an opportunity to review the current Muskoka River Water Management Plan and to determine if operational changes could be made that might reduce flood risk and enhance ecological resiliency in the watershed. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. To find out more about this and other integrated watershed management projects, or to learn more about integrated watershed management in the Muskoka River watershed, visit muskoka.on.ca forward slash IWM projects.